and running. I'm going to jump over to our YouTube channel and make sure that I can see you there. Um, hopefully I can see you on all places and it looks like, yes, I can see myself live here. Uh, let me just make sure that I can see all of you guys on uh, YouTube as well. And then we will jump in and get to it. It's gonna be good. Oh yes, and I see it here, good. We are live, live, live everywhere, I think. Fantastic. Alrighty, well, you guys, what a busy morning it's been already here today. Um, I feel like Friday is just slipping by me. You know, yesterday, those of you who follow my social media, you can follow me on Instagram. If you don't follow our Instagram accounts, both at beadshop.com, and you can follow my personal one, Beadkate, um, where I post some other, um, you know, crafty adventures that I do as well. You know that yesterday I actually took the day off, which was amazing. It was a great day. Um, and I uh, went to Stitches West, which is, some of you who are knitters know that uh, Stitches is kind of a, um, I don't know, a, I guess a conference uh, that goes all over the US. And it's time for Stitches West here on the West Coast. Uh, and so I took some classes yesterday, which was fantastic. I met up with a good friend of mine and took some classes and had some, you know, fancy ladies lunch. And so it was pretty awesome. Um, so, uh, so I took um, uh, some time uh, to do some creativity, which was pretty cool. So it was fun. Um, I think, uh, I think everything, uh, good. You guys both have, I'm just seeing who is who is who on our Facebook and on our YouTube channel there. Um, so it was fun. I had a good creative kind of day off um, and learned some things uh, that uh, I'm going to actually share with you guys. I didn't actually take a knitting class at Stitches. Uh, I took a really cool, uh, a couple of really cool embroidery classes um, because I'm up to share some bead embroidery with you and embroidery was actually one of my very first um, crafts that I ever did as a little girl um, my mom will remember this my mom's watching today as well um, we were a very embroidery focused family we always had uh, hand embroidered pillowcases as I'm sure many of you did so that's the first thing that I learned how to do and so I just wanted to have a little bit of a refresher and to make sure that you know, industry kind of moves on, especially now craft industry innovations are being made all the time. So it was pretty cool. I learned about some new embroidery threads. Um, I took an applique class, which my mom will be stoked about, um, and did some wool with wool applique. It was really cool. So, so I've got some, so it really added, I think, to my pile of uh, technique that I want to share with you. Um, my instructor, her name was Catherine Reynolds, and she was really fantastic. So uh, it was great. I had a great time, um, and it was really fun um, to, uh, to have a little bit of creativity and be around uh, some other creative women. So it was, it was good. So, uh, so that's what, that's what's shaken with me. Um, for you guys, I know everyone's jumping on and saying hello, and it's great to see all of you all. Uh, Gita, our wonderful Gita on, uh, is over on our Facebook feed, um, doing some linking and stuff, uh, from her, uh, her side of the world in Denmark. So thank you so much, Gita, for having me there. You'll see her on sbeadshop.com. And then we've got all of our people coming over on YouTube. It's great that you guys are also watching this feed over uh, on YouTube. I see Suzanne from Finland. It's great to have you, Suzanne. I know you watch us so late over there, but I hope your Friday night's going well. Um, no, it's great to have everybody around. Um, I just wanted to give another um, quick shout out to uh, Allie Mori. I know a lot of you um, <clears throat> saw Allie um, on our feed on Wednesday, our regular feed and our after party. And again, a, a big shout out to her and Karen right now today is taking photos of some of her uh, projects so we can put them up as projects on beadshop.com. So we're really super excited to, uh, to have had that happen. And Allie, don't worry, Allie will be back. 
uh, with us. Um, it's going to be really great to have her uh, to have her come back. And she has some other things up her sleeves for us. So it was such a pleasure and such an honor to have her here. Um, it looks like we have a birthday girl out in the audience. Our Ginger. Happy birthday, Ginger. I am glad that you are having a good day. And it looks like you were baking or something. I lost the, the um, oh, bakery chef make you a cake snap a photo of it i want to see it um it'll be uh it'll be uh cool to see uh to see that so um so it was a fun it was a really fun uh a fun day uh all around so and uh gita just linked uh the lookbook that ali put together for us the year of monthly mix wrap bracelets so again thank you so much from that for that so I have <clears throat> a couple of, uh, of projects, things that I want to share with you today. And then I also wanted to let you guys know that it is our Ivan's last day here today. Um, and uh, hopefully Ivan will come in and say a fond farewell to everyone. He is moving on up, going back to school, and uh, we're sure going to miss him, but um, he leaves some big shoes to fill. But uh, my wonderful partner in crime, my wonderful husband Chris, is actually here taking over all of those shipping duties, so it truly is a family business. Um, and I know you guys are going to uh, just love Chris and welcome him, and he, uh, Ivan has taught Chris everything he knows, so uh, it's going to be great. So we will miss Ivan, um, and we wish him, wish him well. But uh, we're super stoked to have uh, Chris as part of as part of the team. So um, let me. Uh, I'm going to show you what I've got on the table in front of me here, and uh, we'll just get this uh, started. Um, uh, okay, let me move things around here. <clears throat> I'm going to move the camera. I'm getting better at this. I think I've been practicing. So we'll see if I can do this. It's going to be kind of up close and personal as I come in and move this camera around. There we go. And some of you asked about my uh, scarf that I'm wearing. You know, it's still flipping cold around uh, the Bay Area. I know that you guys are experiencing some cold as well, wherever you are. Tammy, our bead table member, Tammy, uh, she texted me this morning to show me that there's snow in Tucson, which is just crazy, right? Um, and uh, just really just nutty. Uh, but we're all trying to stay warm. So, uh, so hopefully... Uh, Will, will spring will be coming soon. But the scarf that I'm wearing, um, uh, Chris's cousin uh, made for me. We did a little trade. I made her some jewelry and she knitted me this lovely lace scarf. So it was good. It was a really good trade. So um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, oh, that's so funny, Ginger. Ivan should sign the wall. Yeah, don't give him any, uh, don't give him any ideas. Uh, right. <laughs> no, there we go. Let me uh, just do this uh, real quick. Uh, about 11, 20. Great. Um, bear with me here a second. Okay, so let me show you guys what I've got going on here. Let me move my, um, let me move my, my computer over on this side so I can kind of see what's going on. I have everybody's, I have a feed, right? We've got the feed on my phone. I've got the feed on my uh, desktop so I can see all of you guys. Well, it's great to have what I just saw Janet saying that it's a low, early spring in Florida. It's the low 80s. Well, enjoy that early spring. But well, you know what? California, we are always so grateful for rain and uh, anytime. So we will take the rain and the snow. It's just, it seems like, you know, the grass is always greener on the side where the weather is nicer, right? But that's okay. So uh, we'll, we'll take it as long as we're healthy and happy and creative will take it, right? So, um, all right, just making sure. Yes, the snow in Tucson is just crazy, crazy, crazy. So stay inside, um, Tammy, just stay inside and do some beating. I, you know, it's a perfect day for it. So let me show you guys here 
This is, uh, a few of you might recognize this uh, necklace here. I wear it once in a while. I, I made it so many years ago. Let me get in a little bit tighter here so you can see this. Um, this is a, a, literally a 10 foot strand of knotted pearls, okay? And you've seen me wear this on camera before. And I uh, made this uh, probably almost 25 years ago. It's a beautiful, beautiful necklace. Of course, it's knotted a little bit. Um, it was hanging on the wall in my office and seemed to have gotten a little knot in it between here and there. Let me see. It's like I'm playing cat's cradle with this thing. That's one of the things about uh, these long pieces is that you have to kind of um, wrangle them up, right? So here is, uh, and you can see if I hold it up a little bit kind of up close, you can see they're about a six millimeter pearl with a nice knot in between. And they have uh, really stood the test of time. These I knotted on silk and the hand of the silk is really beautiful with the pearls. You could also knot your pearls, especially if you wear them every day. Um, it's not the most traditional of uh, ways to do it, but you could knot them on um, like Ceylon, you know, like the fine or the micro Ceylon, which I have done, uh, but we also carry the silk and we're gonna be actually adding the silk uh, on, the, um, on the spools as well. To our thread inventory because silk on the spool is really one of my favorite things to knot with so we'll be adding that as well so in the spirit of this necklace um i i don't know what i was thinking but i guess i was so enamored of our star cuts okay and it was a while back on a on a facebook live or a free tip friday or i don't know what what it was but i was playing around with the star cuts and I laid the star cuts out in a rainbow order. And I was so enamored with myself and them that I decided to make a long necklace, right? I don't know, I don't know what I was thinking, but I did. So <clears throat> I put them, I laid them out in somewhat of a rainbow order. I can't remember, maybe I did. Maybe I did it like this, I don't know. You guys can arrange yours however you want to arrange them. Um, but I just thought that they were super, super luscious. And I thought, well, I would love them as, you know, a big, heavy, multiple strand bracelet. It might look great. And then I thought, you know what, why not? I haven't done like an epic knotting project for a while. So I just got them and I started knotting. Whoops, I forgot this pink. I forgot the the um, the rodentite ones, these guys right here, so pretty. So I started and uh, I started knotting and knotting and knotting and knotting. And uh, right now I'm up to uh, the purple in this. I've got, I still have a few more strands. I was hoping to actually be able to finish it for you guys today, but I have been a little busy, so it didn't quite get as far as I wanted it to. But you can see I have one, two, I think I've got three strands left to do. But you guys were um, expressing an interest in it on our social media. Um, and so I thought I'd share, because I really learned, uh, well not learned, but I, I kind of remember um, some of the great tips about um, knotting. And when I was posting this, I got a lot of great questions from you guys. So I thought I would answer some of those here, because it's easier almost to show you <clears throat> in a live video than to actually try and explain it in words, okay? But the star cuts, I just think, are so delightful. And the star cuts are <clears throat> exactly that. They're cut, and it's really hard to see, but they have a little, I don't know, you can't really see this at all on the, on the video, but the way they're cut, if you look straight down, they look like a little five-pointed star, 
there on them. And so they have kind of all these little cuts on them and they have that vintage feel of a cut bead. And again, when you look at it, you see that little five pointed star. So they're really, really gorgeous. So I still have the wood opalite, the labradorite, and then the sardonyx, which is one of my favorite stones um, that banded agate, striped agates um, left. Um, but I wanted to show you, um, I don't cut <clears throat> 10 feet of thread to do this in. Um, I actually add my thread. So uh, I wanted to show you first how I chose my thread for this, and then I want to show you how to add thread into a project like this. Okay. So to start, what I did, what I first had to do was figure out what needle I was going to use, right? Um, so we have, we carry two different, uh, well, we carry other beading needles, but two different ones that would be appropriate for this project. One, the collapsible eye needle, and that collapsible eye, it's a little hard to see with them, so let me free them up here so you can see, and you can also see them on the website. All of these things can be uh, found, of course, on our website at beadshop.com, and don't uh, tell anyone that I told you. No, tell everyone I told you. Uh, this weekend we are having our great semi-precious sale, so the star cuts are included on that, so I thought it would be the perfect time to share this. Um, the collapsible eye needles, let me bring them up kind of close to you here. Can you see how big that eye is in the needle? Let me take one off. And the thing, the difference between these collapsible eye needles and these flexible eye needles that I'm going to show you is really the eye. And let me let me see if I can get this into the right. There we go. You can kind of see it if I hold it flat there. I'm going to get really close on that eye so you can see. See how at the very top of the needle there's like a little it kind of comes around like this so there's a little tiny opening up here or a little tiny um, space where the thread gets locked in to the needle so it doesn't pull out as you're using it um, this needle is also a heavy gauge needle um, and then the flexible eye the eyes are <clears throat> pardon me the eyes are uh, thinner and smaller and the needle itself is thinner. So can you see the whoops the eye of the needle? See how it's much smaller? I think you can see that there, right there. Um, and when uh, you put the thread through, it doesn't have a little place to lock the thread in. Okay, so and it is a little thinner. So something like this flexible eye is what I would use for these pearls. Okay, because the hole in the pearl is so small that you need the eye of this needle to flex down and slide through the pearl. Uh, it would also work with the English cuts, but I think I need, the English cuts are a little bit of a larger bead and the hole is larger, so I want to level up. I want to have a sturdier needle for all of this. So that's why I chose, whoops, the collapsible eye, okay? Because again, it's heavier um, and the, the tip of the needle is bulkier as you pull it through. But these English, or these star cuts have uh, a much larger hole, so it accommodates this this needle much better. If I tried this needle with these pearls, it wouldn't be a go, okay? The hole uh, in the pearls is just too small this eye of the needle is too bulky and it just doesn't work, okay? So uh, so then, so I've chosen my needle, right? And I have some star cuts actually open here. Let me see if I can grab, I have a few. What I'll do is I test everything, okay, before I use it. So I'll double check and I'll make sure for my, that my needle just goes through the beads. And let me, let me raise this like up really, really close to you. You can see that the hole there is pretty big. There's plenty of room around that needle, okay? And then as I pull it through, 
it clears the bead without any trouble. Okay, so I know this needle is perfect. Now I need to figure about thread, right? And if you have not um, gone to our stitchinary on beadshop.com, it's under our skill builders. Um, we've really spent a lot of time with that stitchinary and updating that stitchinary. Um, and it talks about all the threads that we carry and what works with what. So if you haven't, it'll be a really um, helpful, I think, um, uh, thing to add to your bead education folder that you might have. But this is, I, I made a guess when I started out and um, I thought, well, I think I want to do this on um, fine Ceylon. So I started by just grabbing my Ceylon, grabbing a little bit here, and I just do a small little tester, right, like this, and I put it through my needle, and I lock it in place in that eye, see that there? Then I'm gonna tie a knot, just a, maybe a doubled over knot, just to know that that's my ending knot there. And again, this is just my tester, and then I come in and I thread this on. Let me get nice and tight here so you guys can kind of see. Try and keep my fingers out of the way. I pull it on and then I just tie a knot, right? And I do almost all of my knotting by hand. I'm going to do this very quickly. This is all about threads and other things. It's not actually about doing the purl knotting. We have um, some great skill builders on pearl knotting and we've done a lot of Facebook lives on them. So you can find all of those in our learning section under projects and under Facebook live on our website. Um, so I then I look at the knot that I've tied and it's kind of hard to see, but I'm looking at it. It felt a little small to me when I did it first. And then I really, this is the test. If I can pop that knot inside, yep, I can. So see how my bead just comes over the top of that. So I knew, okay, well, micro or fine Ceylon wasn't really um, the right choice for me. So I went and I grabbed, uh, I'm just gonna grab, this is a different color, but I went to regular Ceylon, okay? And so I got some regular Ceylon. I did the same thing, I tested. I'm gonna cut this. Let me make this picture a little bit bigger here. Uh, I got another needle. <clears throat> I threaded it through and I tied my knot. Let me make this even. Tied my knot on the bottom. There we go. And then I strung a bead. This is really the only way, it's, it's hard to guess, you know, until you get the beads on the thread, what's it, what it's gonna look like. So, you know, this is kind of your little R&D, you know, your research and development as you're making your necklace. So I put this on, tied another knot. You could, I could have used thread that's maybe a little bit longer, but that's okay. Tied my knot, come on. and tightened it up. And then I looked at it and I thought, well, that's definitely a bigger knot. Let me get a little closer here so you can see it. Definitely a bigger knot, but let me put another bead up against it. It looks kind of awkward. It's a little awkward town, right? It's a little too big. Look at that. I, I didn't, it had no elegance to it in the least for me, okay? So I was like, well, that's, so this is, so it's like Goldilocks. Well, that's too little. This is too big. What am I gonna do? Well, I'm going to go back to the drawing board and let's try two strands of the micro Ceylon, right? That should make a knot that's big enough but still small enough that it's fairly elegant. And I really wanted the knots to show. You know, if I am knotting 10, 10 feet of, I was gonna say pearls, 10 feet of star cuts, right? 
I want those knots to show, right? I want people to see, oh my gosh, look at that great knotting job. So I don't want to hide my knots. So I really want them to show, but I don't want them to be just ridiculously huge like this. It just won't look good, okay? So, uh, so I test it again. So I, now I go back to the drawing board. I go back to my micro -sealon. In case you're wondering what color this is, this is actually the charcoal micro -sealon. I wanted it to be dark, so it had kind of a grounding effect to what I was doing, but I thought the black was a little too black. So I went with charcoal. You could use any color you like. You can have a neutral or a color or whatever, whatever you did. Um, but I really liked this charcoal, one of my favorites to work with. <clears throat> so I'll take this double strand of the micro. Again, string it through my needle. Okay, bring it around, lock it into the eye. I really like these beetle on big eye, not big eye needles, but um, collapsible eye needles. They're just, they're a great needle to use. Again, really good, especially if you're doing semi-precious, <clears throat> like all those semi-precious rounds and stuff. They work really, really well. Uh, pearls, they're just a little uh, too heavy um, for the pearl. Um, and that's when I go to the flexible eye. So I'll try it again. I'll put on another star cut. And Ginger's asking, why not double knot? Well, Ginger, it's a good question. Um, if I double knotted, the knot wouldn't be as tidy for me. When you try and pass the knot through once and then twice, and as you're sliding it down, you can get a pretty uneven knot. And the knot will also, you can see here, if I pull this back, you can kind of see the knot. Um, I just get a nice tight compact knot. Sometimes a double knot is a little too elongated and so it has some heft to it but it's still kind of long and skinny. So that's why I double up with threads rather than double up with my knotting. Okay so I'm going to come in I'll tie that knot again and I could lightly wax this if I wanted to uh, to kind of keep all those threads together but I don't usually when I'm knotting. And then I get that down, I can split my threads and kind of tamp it down just a touch. And then let me put on another star cut, okay? And so here, there we go. The knot size is perfect, at least in my opinion, it is so. It's not giant like this regular Ceylon and not anemic like just one of the micro. Of the double strand of micro. So this was perfect. So I knew, okay, it's a double strand for me, or two strands doubled over for me. So then what I did was I started, I threaded my needle with my double threads, and I, I work with about a yard of thread at a time, really. Um, you don't, you know, it depends on how good of a thread manager you are. If you're really good at thread management, you can Cut your thread a little bit longer but your thread will also get fatigued you know as it's running through the beads and stuff so about a yard of thread maybe a yard and a half um, and then double that over um, is probably about all you want to be working with at a time I have a tendency to go a little bit longer because I'm a pretty good um, thread manager anyway so I just started this and I tied a knot okay and I went and I went and I knotted and I just went by color and there's no other transition in between other than I just switched beads and I kept going. Then I got to a point where my thread was, uh, I just had, you know, a short piece of thread left. Okay. Um, the short piece of thread, I just couldn't go on anymore. Couldn't take it anymore, couldn't go on. Um, so I added some thread and I'm going to show you how I do that right now. But first, there's a couple of questions I want to answer. Uh, Jeannie's asking, would Griffin silk be too delicate? I think in this case, I mean, you could use Griffin, maybe our largest size that we carry, I think six. You could even double those, um, if you wanted, but it, it would, I think, be not the best choice for, for this. The, the nylon threads, I think, will last a lot longer from that. 
Um, and someone also asked, they said they, they called um, to ask if we could send you a newsletter. Well, you can take care of your newsletter needs right on your own. Um, you can go right to our website, which is beadshop.com, and right on our website, there is um, a newsletter sign-up box, and you can go ahead and sign up for the newsletter right there. And then since it comes from your email and everything, it'll get delivered safely right into your email box. And just and do remember, we do not sell or give away or loan any of your private information, so that email will stay right with us. So um, we really uh, we really appreciate that. So. Um, and we have a couple of bead celebrities watching us. Hi, Becky Nunn of Nunn Designs. Thank you so much. It's very kind of you to say about my teaching. Um, it's great to see you. I'm so sorry I didn't get to see you in Tucson. As you know, our Tucson goes by so quickly. Um, but hopefully, maybe even someday, you'll come down and visit us and we can do a, a, a Facebook Live together and have you as a special guest. You know, we have some new Nun Design pieces coming in. We're really um, excited about that, uh, to have some new Becky things. So it's always great to see to see you guys watching. And I think Sarah Oler from Softlex was also on a while ago. I don't know if, Sarah, you're still here. But again, both of you, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, what I did was, I think the other day I was testing something and I cut the thread off or whatever. So pretend that this still had a needle on it. And I'm going to show you how to add the threads here. So um, let me just put a needle on here and get this how it should be uh, before I get too far ahead of myself. So, um, but adding thread, you know, it's not as scary. I always say this and you guys never believe me. Well, some of you believe me, but it's not as scary as you might think it is. So I'll just show you here. Um, the way you want to end it, we actually need, there we go, this bead here. And then I need one more. I don't know why I even took those needles off. Let's see if I can get this bead on there. The great thing about these needles is the eye is so gigantor, right? That even when you can't see, uh, it's pretty easy. Oh great, Becky Nunn, that's great. Yes, you'll come down, we'll, we'll make that happen. I think it would be great um, to do, It'd be fun. We'll think of a, a good project. So here is, let me show you this. Let me get in a little tighter so you guys can see. Um, and then, so you guys can see what's shaking here. So when you're ready to add a thread, okay, this is what you need to do for the transition, okay? I've knotted, I've knotted, I've knotted, I've knotted, and then I have two beads, one that's up against this knot here, and then I put on a second bead with no knot in between, okay? Uh, so then, what I do is I get my thread and I've got it over here, Hopefully, I did it before the broadcast, so hopefully it's not a giant knotted, come on, a giant knotted mess. Let me make this a little bit bigger here, okay, and let me carefully, carefully get this thread, and you're going to laugh. I say not to use a long piece of thread, and this thread is ridiculously long, so let me just pull this together here real quick, and I'll show you what I'm doing. There we go. Um, this would be also a great time to use um, a flat iron for um, taming these strands because they're a little wavy, a little wavy gravy. But there we go. There it is. When you use them, um, it's a tip I've shared here before. Uh, one of our um, retreat attendees, Alice, uh, brought a flat iron with her to the retreat and shared how we have um, how you can use a flat iron to iron your threads down so they're not like this they're not kind of uh, a wavy mess so I need to get a fresh flat iron from uh, maybe even a mini one order one in so I have it 
for when I'm um, for when I'm demoing here. So let me get nice tight tight in, okay, so you guys can see what's shaking here. So remember, I've got a knot, I've got a star cut, I've got another star cut, no knot in between the two of those. And I've strung my needle and it has the two strands doubled over, no knot at the end, okay? And I just come in and the, the knot, the hole rather in the star cuts is nice and large. So it can accommodate all of these strands of threads, okay? If it doesn't, you can just leave two of your strands out and knot them in when I do a knot down here. Um, but for this, I can just have all of my strands, my four coming in through here, and then my four coming up here. Okay, and so see how that goes. And Ginger's asking where Janice is. You know, Janice doesn't always pop in on Fridays, so I don't know. I bet that lady's busy doing something else. I don't know. Who knows? She, maybe she's making a project, or it also might be her day with her grandson. Hard to say, but she doesn't always pop in on the free tip Friday days. But we miss her when she's not here, for sure. But you guys are going to see her soon. She's going to be here in March, which is going to be great. Um, so see what I've got now. Can you see this? The threads, this is the new one that's going here, and I've got the threads hanging below. And see, I've just kind of automatically, I do this, I pulled that, the bead down, but I'll leave it open a little bit. So can you see how here, there's no knot there, but look, I've got all these tails. What do you think I'm gonna do with these tails? That's right. I'm gonna knot the new threads around the old threads right here. Okay, so I'm gonna do that now. So the way I do it is I come in and I'm going to give myself, there we go. I can do it a couple of ways. Um, I can uh, do a nice half hitch on this side and a square knot on the other side, which I'll do for this side to show you. And then I'll show you the second way on this other side over here. So I start with a half hitch. A half hitch is just that same knot you use when you're tying your shoes, that first knot. You just take either right over left or left over right, doesn't matter. I go through and I tie them down. Okay. Now I'm going to flip everything over, including the threads. So when I tie my big here. The threads are coming up and around the thread that's running through the interior of the bead holes. Okay. And it's going to be nice and tight and nice and secure. So I'm going to do that. And so I'll go right over left and down. And then, oops, these unruly threads. And then left over right. And down. I'll also, I won't do it here on camera, but I'll come back in and I will give myself uh, some nice glue there. I'll use my uh, hypo cement and soak that knot nicely with the glue. Then after it's at 24 hours and done, uh, I'll go ahead and cut the tails away. Now I have the thread on this side, right? So let's uh, close this one off. The other way I can do this is I can tie another square knot here or I can just tie all the threads together in one big knot like this, just like I do a purl knot, right? But there's all the threads in there. It's going to give me a knot. I know you're saying, well, Kate, isn't that not going to be? It will be. But on this gigantic necklace, it's not going to be noticed. Um, if this were a little more refined, like with pearls or something like that, I'd be much more conscientious with the size of my knot, and I'd probably end up doing a square knot there, just so that it um, blends in a little bit better with the rest of its fellows along the line here. 
But here you can see, and you can see the difference. I mean, these knots are a little bit bigger, but again, with however many hundreds of beads there are in this necklace, it's not gonna really make much difference. Then I'll saturate this knot with glue, like I did the other. And I won't even worry about cutting off the tails right now. You can see along the, in, in the piece, I still haven't cut off um, the extra threads uh, yet from the tails. So I'll just put those aside. I think they wanna be aside this way. There we go. And then I'll just continue to knot, okay? And this will just kind of fall into place, never to be thought of again. Now I'll just put on my beads. And what I do when I string this in real life, not on demo time, um, I'll go ahead and take a few of these off and show you guys uh, how I do this. And then I'll talk about closing. Um, closing is super easy, um, but I'll put a few of those on. I usually put on, I don't know, maybe about a quarter of a strand or so at a time. And it gets kind of crazy with all the beads on here. But so there's my there's my bead. I just push that down. And then I just really I do a lot of knotting by hand. This is kind of a modified version of Janice's hand knotting technique. Um, but we show how to do a bunch of different ways to purl knot. Um, you can use a tool. Uh, we use the knotting tweezer. That's what um, Emily likes to use, or the knotting awl. We've shown that. And of course, just Janice's by hand method. If you go to, I think we've got our pearl knotting handout on the website. Um, you can just go right there and, um, and uh, download it. And it's a perfect way to practice for a wintry day, right? To conquer your pearl, pearl knotting. I'll just go ahead and take off a few of these. It's time to change the color. And sometimes the star cuts vary just a little bit in size, but I think that's part of their charm. Um, they have nice, regular, high quality holes. Um, these star cuts are uh, from uh, our friends at Dakota Stones and the quality of Dakota Stones is so consistent and so um, superior uh, that it, they're really a joy to work with. So you can see, I'll use, and I'll put a few more of these probably on at a time. Um, then I just come in and I do my little, my little knotting. I am a fast pearl knotter, that's what I do. But with a little bit of perseverance, check out our learning on it. Don't be um, frustrated off the bat. It takes, you have to build your muscle memory to pearl knot, uh, especially to pearl knot as fast um, as Janice and I do it. So remember, I've been knotting beads for almost 30 years. So don't judge yourself too harshly and just get a strand and practice and practice. I would not uh, start with a doubled strand, uh, knotting with four strands. Get something so that you can use just a simple double strand of uh, thread. It's catching on my ring here. Um, and that will help the learning curve quite a bit, okay? Let me add just a few more knots here and then I'll show you how I'm gonna close this. You already know how to do it, you just don't know that you do yet. I'm gonna cut these just slightly shorter because they're flopping around and kind of bugging me a little bit. There we go. And so let me uh, come in and just do a couple more knots and then I'll show you how to close it off and then we'll have um, a, a special guest. Uh, here at the end of the broadcast. So what you want to do when you're closing this up, and especially you want beads that have pretty large um, large holes here. Um, Margaret's asking how many beads in a 10-foot necklace. Well, I'd have to do some math. However many star cuts there are, I used every color. So if we count how many beads there are in a star cut strand and multiply that by how many strands we have, that's how many beads. <laughs> and this actually may be longer than 10 feet. I'm going to actually have to measure it. So let's say that I'm finished, even though I'm not yet, but uh, it's actually pretty easy to, uh, to finish it up. I put um, a bead 
on the other side. Uh, so I'm going to have to do that with one of these labradorites because I don't think... Oh, no, I did. Look how clever I was on that. I did keep a pink... Um, uh, rhodonite bead out here. There we go. So now I need a bead on the end that doesn't have a knot. And let me get nice and tight here so you can see. And actually, I actually need two beads. And this kind of rhodonite bead is a little anemic looking, which is kind of probably why I rejected it. So let me just put another Labrador right on there. There we go. You can see how easy these holes are. I can just really get the threads through there actually without a needle at this stage. Okay, so see what I have here? This is my beginning where I started. This is my end where I'm ending. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, um, I actually want, I might do this twice through actually. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get my needle that I was using before. I go through that star cut like that. And this is why you need beads that have large holes because it's got to accommodate all of these strands. So see this here, what I've got going on, how these don't have knots. So remember how I did these knots down here like this? I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut away my needle so my threads are three. And I'm going to um, tie my square knot, my half hitch, and my square knot there. Then I'm going to come in. I need just a little bit of space here. And I'm going to tie my half hitch and my square knot there. And then I'm going to send with a needle my strands through this star cut and put one final knot there, okay, with the, with the, square, with the half hitch and then the square knot. And then that's it, it'll be endless. And then you can just wrap and wrap and wrap however you want it. Of course, you don't have to do it this way. You can put a clasp on like I did with the pearls. I just added kind of one of those traditional pearl clasps, uh, gold fill pearl clasps on the end, and it looks really nice. So either way, you can make it endless or you can make it, um, you can make it, uh, um, with a clasp. It just depends on what you like. And so, and that's it. So I still have three more colors to go. And the way that this is going to wrap, um, and I'll show you as I move, I'll move the camera and I can wrap it around. Um, I think it's going to be kind of an epic multiple strand, uh, multiple strand, strand necklace. So I'm going to move the camera around. I'll show you what this looks like up front. And then we'll also bring in our special guest star here for the end of our broadcast. I'll make that up and I'm gonna pass this around here. And whoops, sorry about my finger in the way. Might as well hand that over to you if you don't mind putting that on. And then I'll move my chair over a bit. I'll move this chair, or also actually probably switch chairs here. And I'll show you guys really quick let me take this this off. You can see as I I can move over and you can come in on this side if you want. Are you all right? Okay. Yeah. So you can see how this will scoot back, but it's just gonna wrap and wrap and wrap. And look, here's our special guest <laughs> star. Look at that. It's Ooh. not Alfie, it's Ivan. No, no. Yay! <laughs> I'm gonna keep wrapping um like this. There we go. So awesome. There it is. Looks great. Yes. So <laughs> I'm. This is Ivan. Everyone's stoked. So stoked to see you. Aww. Um. It's Ivan's last day. It is. It is. We're gonna miss you. And um, I just want to thank you. Oh, thank you. And I know that you're so beloved by all of our viewers and our our customers. <laughs> but I know everyone wanted to wish you um wish you well. Um. You have some adventures. What are you doing next? Um, well, for the foreseeable future, I'm just going to take a little bit of time, you know, just kind of relax, right. and recharge, and then, um, yeah, starting in summer, I'm going back to school, and then hopefully, if everything goes to plan in two years, I'll be graduating, 
and uh, yeah, moving on to whatever. Yeah. Whatever holds next. What What do you think is going to float your boat over in school? I know um, you have a lot of interests outside the bead shop world. Yeah, enamel pins, rust. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to write and yeah, see. Yeah, do some writing. Yeah, and yeah. see, and see, what, see what, what comes from what that. what comes from it, yeah. Because I know mm-hmm. Ivan's a very talented, very talented writer. And you're gonna, I try. <laughs> yeah, you're going to do great. So yeah. we really are, you're getting so many lucks, good Aww. luck, and all the best. So it's great. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. so, so much for everything you've oh, done. Thank you, guys. Yeah, so. and thank, thank every one of you. The experience would truly not have been as great as it was without all of our great customers. Yeah, that's really true. So. Ivan's the one who transcribes all of your notes and stuff <laughs> that you write into the orders and everything. So Ivan writes all of those little happy notes on yeah. there. So um, he can always feel feel the love through the miles. So thank you so much uh, for you guys. Thank you thank so you. much. We're going to have a little celebration lunch yeah. now. We're going to miss him. But um, I'll see you next week. While Ivan's resting up, we are going to be doing Facebook Live with the Tree of Life. You guys aren't going to want to miss it. It's going to be awesome. So we'll have those details up on the website next week. And I will see you next Wednesday for Facebook Live. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Happy beating. Happy beating. All right. We'll see you guys soon.